and an excellent morning to you. So how does it feel to be back to work? Especially on a Wednesday morning. It feels weird, right, MF? Yeah, feel it weird? actually does. Yeah, like... It actually really does. But, I mean, come on, <laughs> it was a long weekend, people. Mm, mm. You gotta work if you yes, wanna sir. eat. <laughs> Hopefully the traffic hasn't started too badly, but I imagine it kind of makes you feel like it's a Monday. But not to worry, that's why we are here. We're here to brighten up your morning. Just two more days till the weekend is here again. So, hey, not to worry, not to worry. MM and I are, you know, hey, we've just been smiling all morning. Like, okay, so yeah. fresh it's week. Fresh week. Well, it's not a fresh week for us because we've been working. Mm -hmm. No public holidays for us because we. it's important for us to keep you entertained, you know? Very true. Very, you know, very true. relaxed excited about your day when you wake up in the morning seeing beautiful faces like ours <laughs> yes looking lovely city by um, the way I, I was gonna say the same thing that blue just pops on your skin mm you. you know i hate you right you know you I just know. look too good for I a pregnant know. it's I not know. fair i know stop it i can't help it <laughs> <laughs> oh my name is titi Lyo Inso, and we're live streaming right now on tvcontinental.tv. Oh, let me take that again. I forgot that we've changed the website. It's actually tvcentertainment.tv right now. That's tvcentertainment.tv. That's our new, brand new Tierra website. Mm -hmm. And of course, we can uh, stream live with you. You can stream live with us on Facebook Live at TVC Connect. Please send in those comments. Social media is all about the comments and the hashtags, especially this hashtag, Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Now, you can also download our mobile app. Now, that's really important. Uh, if you're someone that has like handheld devices that you carry around, please download it on the Android or iOS store as soon as you can. And you can watch from your mobile devices anywhere in the world, I tell you. So, um, well, I'm going to be giving you the lineup of what we have planned today. And let's start with this. From Bonnie Island in River State, we have Ida Hams giving us a musical performance very soon. On health this morning, we have Dr. Obina Awiaka. Now, he's going to be joining us to talk a little bit about cataracts. Now, cataracts have been troubling people from a long time. I've been hearing that word cataracts for a long time. It would be great to get a little insight into what exactly it is. And of course, it's breastfeeding month this August on Wake Up Nigeria and our certified breastfeeding specialist, Titilayo Medunye, is going to be here talking about the proper way to breastfeed a child. Also joining us for a musical performance is Afro pop singer Too Soft. And on relationship this morning, we'll be talking about maturity in marriage. Bosse Fawaini is lead counselor at Marriage Matters, and she'll be joining us to talk about that. Hmm, is there actually immaturity in marriage? Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> we have Basil Okpara and Ada Okpareke, who are two kids who, who deserve to be celebrated. Now, we'll be giving you a lot more details on their achievements a little later on on the show. Another guest we have this morning is award-winning filmmaker Imo Umore. Now, he is also the first to make a silent black and white film in Nollywood. Herbert Macaulay. Today, we march to the... All right. Morning, guys. Yeah. Welcome back to work to mm. everyone. You, you, you know, those kids who... Uh, especially the guy who's working on an app. Mm -hmm. I wonder if parents realize that that is something, a skill their children can learn during the holidays as well. Mm, there are actually coding. so many places offering coding as part of the yeah. um, summer, coaching, summer camp. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the summer camps. And I think it's something that many parents need to take advantage of. It's not mm -hmm. even expensive. There are not some anymore. that for the entire month yeah. you can actually get... Um, your children being taught all these things for mm. sometimes 20 or less. Mm -hmm. So so these are skills that they're definitely going to take a long way. Yeah, um, and I can still remember as a child, 
people hiding computers away from kids. So they wouldn't let you even touch it. It's like, ah, don't let him touch you. Ah, he's going to press that spoil button or something. Yeah. You know, like there was just something that they'll press and everything would just scatter. But things have changed now. It's better to expose kids to that. Yeah, well, coding is, some okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, is something that I would like Elsie to learn because mm -hmm. um, at her age, I'm amazed at how she's been able to, mm -hmm. you know, manipulate with my phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm amazed at the things she does with my phone. <laughs> you get, and sometimes even my husband complains that, don't you think you're exposing her too much to your phone, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm excited at, about, about what she's learning and mm. you know how she's learning. Yeah, but it's I think amazing. I think most of our kids, the kids born after two, 2005, are yeah. of the digital generation. Yes, so, yes. Parents should so not that say, reason, "Oh, don't you know, do that's this." What, don't that's do what that. is expected. We've gone beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing is, there's need for parental control. Yeah. But saying you can't, mm. nah. Mm. And anyway, we idea. do have to go to the news now. Ibrahim is on standby for us. Uh, welcome to the news. Yay. I will begin with the presidential directive mm -hmm. ordering the Central Bank of Nigeria to stop providing foreign exchange for importation of food in the, into the country. President Muhammad Buhari said the directive is based on the steady improvement in agricultural product, uh, production and attainment of full, fu uh, full food security. He added that the foreign reserve will be utilized strictly for diversification of the economy. The president noted that states like Kebi, Ogun, Lagos, Jigawa, Boeing and Kano uh, have taking advantage of the federal government's policy on agriculture with huge returns in rice farming. He urged more states to plug into the ongoing revolution to feed the nation. The president, uh, the president made the remarks while hosting APC governors to Adil Kabir launch at his country home in Dora. In Alto India, where the leader of the Islamic movement of Nigeria is receiving treatment at the Medanta Hospital, Ibrahim El Zagzaki and his wife, who were detained in Nigeria for more than three years, were finally granted the leave to travel for medical treatment after a long legal battle. Our correspondent, defense correspondent Sifon Asin, tells us more about this. The leader of the Islamic movement in Nigeria being wheeled out of the airport. We gathered that. Ibrahim El Zagzaki, his wife, four members of the Shiite movement, and a number of Nigerian Secret Service officials arrived in Delhi, India, about 3.15 p.m. local time. This video released by the movement shows their leader and his wife being transported in an ambulance to the Medanta Hospital. We were told it's too early to tell how long the Shiite group leader was spent at the medical facility. Back in Nigeria, members of the Islamic movement are pleased their Sheikh is receiving medical attention. Abdullah Mohammed says the agitation paid off and their leader should be allowed to receive medical treatment for as long as necessary. As the Sheikh is having a lot of problems, not just eye problem, not just lead poisoning, uh, a lot of gunshot, a lot of uh, 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 bullet peanut in his body. So there are different, there must be different uh, fields, uh, doctors from different fields to handle him because he has a lot of problems. He says the group will not be taken to the streets for demonstrations, except there is a need for it. If provided that the Sheikh is not complaining, is receiving proper treatment, is well observed, I don't think if I have any problem, all we want is the Sheikh to be healthy and come back. The movement says the Sheikh should be allowed ample time for treatment according to the decision of the courts and it shouldn't be cut short. Sifon ACN, TVC News, Abuja. And back in Lagos State, Governor Babajide Songwulu has transmitted the final list of his cabinet nominees to the State House of Assembly. This comes four weeks after the governor sent the first batch of the list to the lawmakers for screening. 13 commissioners and special advisers designates made the second list, which had already been transmitted to the legislature. The names in the second batch of the nominees include Oladili Ajayi, Uluwato Ifainka, Yetunde Arubieke, Olare Waju uh, Sanusi, Joe Igwekwe, uh, Bonus Solomon Shanu, and Kabiru Ahmed. Others are Lola Akonde, Anofi uh, Olare Waju Legushi, uh, Sholakwe Hammond, Maruf Akinderu Fatai. Uh, Shula Might, Olufunke Ade Bolu, and Tokumbo Wahab.
Back in Abuja, residents and land owners of Kaja Estates, Rozo in Abuja, have called on the federal government to investigate the alleged fraud carried out by the management of the state's developers. In a peaceful protest, they complained about the ill treatment by thugs allegedly brought into, uh, in by the developers. Our correspondent, Alessina Iria, reports. Residents in the FCT are still out and about town visiting fun spots as they continue celebrating Salah on the second day of the public holiday declared by the federal government. <laughs> but residents of Kaja Estate, the satellite suburb of the FCT, are not celebrating. Rather, they chose to engage in a peaceful protest calling on the EFCC and the federal government to come to their aid. They alleged that they are constantly threatened with eviction by the management of a development company in charge of their estate, who has failed in its duties to bring development to the estate despite having paid their development levies. Other managers too came that they are now the new Kaja management and they, they put us at the gate and they've been intimidating us with us at the gate. People have been beaten up several times in this estate. All of us in the house. As I'm telling you now, my back, they, they beat me and threw me on the floor and started kicking me and even destroyed my phone. Because I gave my children, I said they should video what is happening. They, they, my children were using the phone to video. They collected it and started beating me and even destroyed the phone in the house, including my visitor that came around. Just like that, nothing. See, if you put your camera in the window, you see somebody inside. I paid a visit to the office of the estate developers to hear from the directors, but the office was locked. See, Excuse me. Madam, not here, not here, not this door. We built our houses. They told us they were going to give us infrastructure, road, water, perimeter fencing. But this is 10 years now. There is nothing of such. Residents have paid millions of naira, running close to over, over 200 million naira. Yet one of the directors that we know, Pastor Andrew Akugu, suddenly disappeared. There is no accountability. Nobody knows what happened to the money. The road is still like this. And then so, subsequently, suddenly, a new group came, led by one barrister, Victor Giwa, claiming their new management. I'm aware it's before the Nazareth State Magistrate Court. Can, can you please permit me? I put a call across to Mr. Giwa, the legal advisor to the estate management. He said most residents in the estate are illegal and no form of harassment is being carried out. What is being done is verification exercise to ascertain the legal residents. And I'm the lawyer to Kajan Nigeria Limited. Okay. Now, most 80% of the residents there yeah. They came into that plot illegally. Okay. If you know you have got a plot on uh, in our in our premises, in our property, come, let us verify. Come with your document. 80% of them refuse. So the people you saw at the gate, they call them site officers. Those are the people that will ensure that before you do anything in the next state, you must come with your document. The residents want this dispute with the estate developers resolved quickly and they want government to direct the appropriate agencies to look into their plight. Celestina area, TVC News, Abuja. And that's it on the news update for this hour. Weather update is next. Headlines this Wednesday. I have the Guardian newspaper starting us off here. It says police, <clears throat> DHQ, deny alleged arrests over Taraba killings. Why slain officers can't be buried now by Mba uh, incident poses serious threat to national security, it says. Now the story starts on the cover there and continues on page six. Herdsmen have killed 3,400 people uh, persons in 2019, according to Fanny Coyote. Uh, it also says on the news page four, why we withdrew troops from checkpoints in Plato State. A special report here uh, talks about friction in Lagos, or rather friction in local governments over fiscal autonomy and accountability. Meanwhile, the Northern Coalition accuses Tinubu of double standards on unity. He shouldn't expect he can fool anybody anymore, it says. Allegations mundane, unnecessary, says 
APC chieftain. Shiites alleged government frustrating El Zakzaki's treatment in India. Isn't that a little bit soon? Mm. <laughs> uh, it says here, my second term is better, <clears throat> is to better the poor, Buhari promises. And finally, NCAA rights airlines over Ebola outbreak urges vigilance compliance. That's what we have on the cover of The Guardian. All right, let's check out The Vanguard this Wednesday. Taraba police killings latest. Army captain had 191 phone chats with wanted kidnapper. Arms dealer sings, I sold six AK-47 uh, rifles to Wadumi at 800,000 naira each. Uh, policeman accused of giving army false report arrested. And ri rifles of slain policemen are with soldiers, uh, says a villager there. And Vasilis, others, make 3.3 billion naira uh, on post-UTME tests and screenings. Over here, we have India's Shiites to foot El Zagzaki's medical bill. Uh, Obasaki is my brother. A rift created by people for selfish interests, says uh, Oshomale. And Embrace Ruga, PDP BOT chairman, tells Nigeria. Wow. And up here, we have uh, some other stories. Why we stopped Forex for food imports, uh, says President Buhari there. And uh, that's what we have on the cover of the Vanguard. We also have the Punch newspaper here, and the headline is on the Apapa gridlock. Soldiers, hoodlums, extortion, frustrating or Shimbajo panel. Bribe takers in uniforms are impersonators, says Okwefa. And uh, it says, uh, provide bribery evidence against our boys, according to the Navy. Meanwhile, at the top here, it says, uh, foreign investors acquiring insurance firms over recapitalization. Ministers will get targets, experts to man a Greek, says Buhari. On the Ebola resurgence, be vigilant, NCAA warns airlines. Uh, meanwhile, it's at the bottom here, just below the photo story, it says robberies. UI imposes partial curfew on campus. Three die, two missing in Lagos boat accident. On BB Niger, UK police may fire Kafi. El Zagzaki lands in India, begins treatment, and finally, Secondos laments inadequate fund to complete PDP secretariat. That's what we have on the cover of the punch. Yeah, let's check out the Daily Sun with the headline, the federal government moves against food importation, direct CBN to stop Forex uh, to importers. Wow. So all that conflicts and everything's yeah, yeah. it's going to be pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. And Northern Coalition faults Tinubu's politics, accuses APC leader of misleading Buhari. And down here we have some other stories. IPOB PDP BOT chairman differ on Ruga. And Khan asks Buhari to review security master plan. We're making progress against banditry, says the CAS there. And how to make Nigeria great, prosperous. That's a statement by Obasanjo that you will find on page eight. And uh, on the cover of the Daily Sun, we have a photograph of passengers boarding free train, uh, tra well, rail transportation provided by the Ocean State Government to Lagos. Wow, isn't that a, isn't, that's good news? Uh, after the Idel Kabir celebration in Oshogbo yesterday. So you'll find that um, photograph there On the of um, passengers heading mm. to Lagos. Mm. Okay, we have the Nation newspaper up next, and the major headline is, No more Forex for food import, Buhari tells CBN. So that is a really big story now. Uh, Nigeria has achieved food security, more push for agriculture, it says. Hmm. Uh, new drugs to make Ebola treatable, more on page six. U.S. begins new rules on legal immigrant, uh, immigrants in October. Right at the top here, it says, Son Lu nominates Ibokwe, 12 others. El Zagzaki begins treatment in India. Uh, India rather. Uh, right below the masthead here, al Majiri education. Government begins fresh pilot test in Kano, Oyo, seven others. And finally... <clears throat> CBN Deputy Governor to Chair Amcon. That's what we have on the cover of The Nation. Uh, yeah, so we'll be back with more newspaper headlines, of course, at the 7 o'clock hour. Mm. Right now, we're going to take a break and be back with traffic.
Hello and good morning. Welcome. If you're just tuning in, it's time for the Lagos Traffic Update right here on Wake Up Nigeria. Now, you need to note something. You can join us, be part of this segment by sending in messages online. That's uh, Instagram, Facebook, or even Twitter. Let us know what the traffic situation is in your neighborhood. Maybe take a picture, send it to us. Make sure you use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Now, uh, we're heading west this morning, starting if for instance, you're coming from Aja area of Lagos. Now, that area has been notorious for amazing traffic jams, especially at this time of the morning. And it would be assumed that being uh, the first work day back, there would be quite a gridlock. But apparently, it is not so. Um, it will take you about 45 minutes to move from Aja area of Lagos to Victoria Island Bunny Camp. That's all the way at the end of Uzumbadi Way. Uh, the only major trouble spots are at the Jackon Day Junction, uh, which is just basically after all the major estates have, you know, there's just so many estates in that area. Uh, but you won't be in that traffic for too long, maybe 10, 11 minutes, uh, right before you get to the Circle Mall, that's the Jackon Day Junction. That's the only trouble spot I see on the entire expressway. Uh, of course, it does slow down a little bit at uh, the Marawa bus stop, which is that big square roundabout. Yeah, that one, you know the one I'm talking about. Just keep calm, 45 minutes, you should be at your destination. Uh, but look out for uh, the Civic Center Junction, that traffic light. I don't know whether that traffic light actually needs some help because every time I'm there, it seems to just skip from color to color on its own accord. I don't know whether that was the plan, uh, but it is causing a little bit of traffic at that particular point. Uh, we have MM, Mary and Yomi in the kitchen, and I know they have some updates for us. Yeah. You no, you start. You know, there's, there's four of us in the kitchen. <laughs> just, yes, yeah. there are What's four people to do in the kitchen anything? right now. Just wanted to put it out. <laughs> wow, yummy. So you did yes. actually go there. Yeah. You did. Mm. Great. So, we, all right. Could be five. We are yet to be five, yummy. Stop. There could, there could be five. We are but, yet to be five. Yeah. Can we go on okay, the traffic Okay, so traffic um, at, the, uh, at the moment. Thanks, guys. Chevron traffic light is back. All right. Okay, so, well, this guy's actually talking about the traffic yeah. um, lights at the Chevron um, area of... Um, well, Lagos actually this morning. Um, let's see. National Inward Bolade Oshodi is good to go. Mm -hmm. And this is at, this was at about 5.36 a.m. this morning. Dokwemu on the bridge Inward Cement is good to go at the moment. Iano Ekbaja Inward Dokwemu also. Dokwemu on that bridge is good to go. Mm -hmm. Return trip from Oshodi Inward Iano Ekbaja is good to go. Ikeja on the bridge inward Allen and routes Alausa Secretariat is good to go. So apparently the road seems kind of free this morning along the Yanoekbaja Ikeja access. Yeah, well, I, I have one update. Honestly, here. it's it seems amazing the yeah, way I've the traffic is. One update is. here. Um, uh, it says it's very busy. This was at 629. That's about six minutes ago. Okay. Uh, Ilezik Inward Ajayi Farm on Route Ikeja, yeah. uh, Ikeja uh, along National, uh, now very busy. So it's, mm. it's pretty busy. Mm. It's not blocked, but it's busy. So, you know, mm. uh, free flowing traffic, but there's a bit of traffic there. Okay. Any, uh, any other updates? Any update? Well, I have updates here, but I think Titi seems to yes. have I, stopped I for wanted us to mention that it does seem like the roads are unusually free at this moment. It feels like everybody has that on your marks, get set, go <laughs> thing going on. Um, because if you're heading from Ojota bus stop right now and heading to Marina, which is a very uh, frequently traveled route for a lot of people, it's just going to take you about 45 minutes. I don't know what's going on. It just seems alarmingly free. <laughs> and uh, the only trouble spots I see here are just uh, when you pass Obani Koro uh, to Shomolu area. And it's just going to take you about five to 10 minutes to get through those uh, usual bus stop gridlocks. And um, if, for instance, you keep going and you pass the National Stadium, you will probably be slowed down around the Alaka Ikori area as well. But once you get onto the Eco Bridge, it is plain sailing, really free until you get to Akwogon. Now, Akwogon, everybody knows about Akwogon. It's just, 
It's just the way the road is. It goes up, it goes down, it goes left, it goes right. Of course, you're going to slow down there, but you're not going to be there for more than two, three minutes. Uh, and you should be at Marina, as I said, between 45 to 48 minutes if you leave Ojota now. So, uh, Mary, that update you had, okay. what was it about? Yeah, so um, if you're coming from Ileipo bus stop, um, heading to Yanopaja this morning, uh, you would actually not spend as much time as you usually would, surprisingly. You would spend about 50 minutes. Um, I know you usually on a busy Monday, you would be spending over an hour, but this morning is just about 50 minutes. And there are pockets of traffic here and there, like bumper to fender traffic, in fact. Uh, approaching Yanokwaja is very busy, it's bumper to fender, but leaving Ileipo to Yanokwaja isn't so bad until you're close to Yanokwaja. And uh, afterwards, it's actually free except for pockets of traffic until uh, you arrive at uh, Ilezik, which is quite shocking. So going through Dokbemu area, all of that, uh, the traffic isn't so bad, okay? Uh, so all you need to worry about is just uh, getting through Ikeja along to Ikeja Bridge, but from Ikeja Bridge, it's a freeway all the way to Oshodi. So it's not so bad this morning. <laughs> mm. it, as it's honestly alarmingly free. I was expecting it to be like really jammed, gridlocked. I, I was feeling people waking up extra early to beat the traffic. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be that bad this morning. Wrapping it up, if you're heading west right now from Lasso all the way to Orile, you're going to be there in about an hour, 10 minutes, which on that particular expressway is good news. Um, but you might have to take Old Ojo Road to bypass the expressway for a little while. All right, and that's all I have on the traffic updates for now. What are we talking about today? Well, um... You have something? Well, 80% of Nigerian women's yeah, trending, yeah. actually. I don't know if you caught up on that. 80% of Nigerian women, yes. 80% of Nigerian women. For some reason, I have no idea. Okay, it started as 80% of Nigerians. Okay, so you know, there's usually that generalization of 80% yeah. of Nigerians do this. Nigerian people are like this. Nigerian people yeah. are like yeah. that. And then it just went from Nigerians to Nigerian men. Nigerian men are scum, Nigerian men are trash, Nigerian men da, 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 da. <laughs> And then from Nigerian men are to Nigerian women. women. Okay. Now, what's interesting about the 80% of Nigerian women is the fact that women are the ones calling us out on social media. Calling other women Caring out. Other again. women out. So there, no one is, okay, so it's not, it's, it's not particularly saying, oh, okay, I'm calling this person out, but it's 80% of Nigerian women. For example, I saw this tweet that actually got my attention. 80% of Nigerian women are cheats, liars, toxic, deceptive, ah. hate themselves in private. They are feminist until it involves, it involves spending their own money. Ah. Extremely religious, oh my uh -uh. judgmental. Oh, wow. I mean, the girl went all out. And you know what? Hmm. A lot of other girls hmm. in the comment section agreed with her. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yes. Okay. And, you know, this is just one out of many other tweets. I showed you this morning hmm. now about women, you know, Saying, in short, as a matter of fact, some people even went I went as far as saying, you know, it's not just eighty percent now. All Nigerian women, <laughs> we no. hate each other, we don't like each other. So, I'm like, why mm. is this happening? Like, why why are we doing this to ourselves? Like, so it, do, it does feel like it does feel like it does <laughs> feel like an upbringing thing. Yeah, it does feel like an upbringing thing for I'm Nigerian women. For Nigerian women, I feel like the way our mothers told us or made us, um, well, either, or it depends on the side of the coin you, you start from, either really be defensive and aggressive to make sure you get what you want, or be very submissive and meek. There was never I'm not somewhere sure. in the middle. I'm not sure this thing mm. that you guys are saying is a Nigerian woman thing. Uh, I, that that was what I was going to say, but... Just women in general, yeah? Well... <laughs> so internationally, there's this thing about you know lifting up women and mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um, getting other. supporting 20 million women in mm -hmm. 2020 and things like yeah. that. So you have all different companies mm -hmm. doing that, mm -hmm. but you then have hashtags like women supporting women mm -hmm. and uh, conferences like Women of the World. So yeah. basically, what they've been trying to do over the past 10 years 
is to get women to support more women. No, 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 no. And when a woman rises, you know, you take other her, women with you. The, Don't yeah. be the only person up there mm. by yourself and mm. things like that. So mm. I think it's a global so phenomenon. As, as um, bringing it back home, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it, I find it really amusing when, uh, especially men go about, um, women, Nigerian women like money, they feel entitled. <laughs> to me, it's not a thing of entitlement. Personally, I work for my money. The one I can do, I will do. The one you can do, bring to the table. We'll meet each other halfway. Definitely. All will be well. However, we need to also point out the fact that <coughs> men are also entitled. Uh -huh. And I'll tell you what I mean. So as a man, you expect your wife to take care of the home. Yeah. You expect her to take care of the you kids, know, the kids mm. take care of other things. Why? Because you say that is our role, right? Yeah. But you expect her also to be understanding when you don't bring food to the table, when you are not also assisting, in quotes, her in her role. Mm. So you've clearly defined your role that I am the man. Mm. You are supposed to do this. This is what you are supposed to do as a woman. But like when things are not going the way you want it, you don't try to fix things. Yeah. So a woman is also expecting that, okay, I'm doing my role as the woman. I'm taking care of the family. I'm taking care of the kids. Of course, you're supposed to be the provider. Oh, yeah, provide now. Mm. And that's what causes conflict. Okay. So Instead of you guys, just like we talked result, about last week, as a result of a lot of men not doing what they're supposed to do, that it's women well, exactly. in a generation before us now have taught the the of uh, the generation coming behind them to either be on the defense or either be very okay so now that this experiences. actually brings so i hear both of you mm. but this actually brings the question mm. do we men mm. do we actually really support each other so you see that supporting do each other we thing. stand by each other do mm. we you know try to you know pat each other on the back and say you are doing well Yes, I so encourage you. I'm here for you. Women have been put in competition and have willingly allowed themselves to be rats yes. that have been moved around. I like see there's a puppeteer, exactly. Yeah. There's a puppeteer just fixing, okay, you go this way. Yeah. It is a woman thing and it is a major problem. <laughs> you feel threatened when another woman is, is successful. Mm. Or you, want to, or you want to kill yourself <laughs> to impress the yes, men no. in your office. No, yeah. I, 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 it's a, a problem. A lot of people know, it's, those that know me, they know I don't really have... I'm not a part of this conversation. No, 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 no. You no, no. join this conversation will, because we are bringing so, men into so this. The, the, issue, is, the issue is being misunderstood. Yeah. A lot of times, even if you approach a woman to try and even make friends with a woman, they're always thinking, oh, what exactly does this, what's the agenda, yes. exactly. That's what we're saying. But, That's mm. exactly what, what, what I was saying that, you know, um, because the spaces mm. that have been, well, that the world has created, has created for women. Has too little. Are, are very so little. it's a struggle. So when a woman goes up and yeah. somebody else is coming up, it looks like, okay, we're fighting for very little resources. And so and what they're now saying is create more opportunities for women. You know, so more women can in come conclusion, up. I, what, I just, oh, what I'm just wow. going to say is we are to, w women mm. together as mm. one, yeah. we are a driving force. We are strong. We, yes, are, we are strong. Ah. We are stronger than oh. we, we think we are. You don't need to fight, and, you don't need to you fight for resources. I'm telling you. You don't need to fight for men. I mean, come on. Please. Men. You're good on your own. <laughs> You'll be fine. You fight for men. Welcome back. You're on to Wake Up Nigeria, people. And of course, with me in the kitchen this morning is Chef Debbie. Hey, baby girl. Hi. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, you're looking very bright. I thank like it. Thank you. All right. So, Debbie came with a, a bit of a, no, not even a bit. She came with so much spice this morning. Yeah. And I'm really liking what you're making for breakfast. It's quite exciting. It's different. It's fresh. You know, after all the holidays, it's pretty long, you know. And then you're coming up with this amazing breakfast recipe this morning. This morning, she's making avocado spread with ram meat spice or spiced ram meats and, uh, sorry, on, on a garlic, garlic toast. toast. Yeah, people. So let me take that again so that you understand. Or would you rather take it? Okay, so, so it's um, avocado spread yeah. with um, ram minced meat mm -hmm. on a garlic toast. Yeah. So the idea is, you know, 
I can't afford to allow Salah fade away without doing something uh, with Salah. With... Because after all, there's actually going to be a lot of leftovers anyway. Exactly. Yeah. That's the point. Mm -hmm. So it's just making simple thing with what ingredients you already know. Okay. So we have bread. We have instead of eating bread the normal mm. way, just do something interesting with it. Oh, okay. And I see that you bought a, bought a glass of um, juice. juice. Yeah. Of Fresh pineapple? orange juice. Orange wow, nice. Yeah. I mean, this is such a perfect breakfast. <laughs> Unfortunately, the hustling and bustling <laughs> this morning is not going to allow many of us have breakfast. But hey, people. When I heard ram meat, I just. <laughs> <laughs> Are you joking, oh, Yomi? Okay, we finished making it earlier. Yeah. No. Okay. no. Did you have any ram meat this season? This first No, this? I didn't. So. You did not? Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. okay. I almost did not. And then... Um, everywhere is empty. Yeah, everywhere is We are still trying to set up. Hi, Chef. How's Hi, it going? Hi, good morning. Okay, there's this bread here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, so we're going to... Um, so, so how can I help? Just, how can I help? Can um, I help? Do that behind while I set up our ingredients that we'll, we'll be working with this morning. You want to help out or you want okay, to yeah, take I'll, your cup of coffee? No, let me help out. Let okay, help great. Out. Fantastic. So apparently this... We're talking about raising a man before, so... <laughs> I've been properly. Right. I have home training. Okay, so okay, it's so just. Where, 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 what do you want me to do? Uh, okay, so maybe it's just lay, um, spread, the spread the plate. The thing yeah. And um, so apparently we're working with um, eggs this morning. We have our ripe our meat here. Yeah. Already so that's the ram meat, chopped. Right? Yes. Okay, chopped and. Yeah. Ready for. What's this? Okay. To avocado. Be, so we have our avocado here, here. And you know that avocado is quite healthy, really, really, really healthy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's one of the most healthiest, you know, it's one of the healthiest fruits that you can find. Mm. And um, they have amazing health benefits, which I'm talking about later on. So put these away. Yes, so you can put this away. So we have our blended garlic here, I'm sure. What's that? Blended garlic. Ooh, okay. Yeah, we're having garlic toast. I can toast. smell it. You're one of those food that don't like garlic. Garlic toast, is that what you said? Yeah. Then you'd be spending like garlic all day. Well, not really. <laughs> but anyways, yes. Yeah, so we have our butter here. We have tomatoes. We have avocado fruits here. Yeah. We have our um, ram meat, which has been, you know, diced, properly chopped. Mm. And um, we have pepper, butter, salt, garlic, and of course our eggs and um, lemon. Okay, there's a lemon there. So well. I'm guessing, Chef Debbie, Yeah. I'm guessing the lemon is for the ram meat, yeah? No, for the avocado. Oh, for the avocado. Okay, yeah, so oh, okay. it doesn't change its color. Color. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I think it also plays the same role as salt. If you add salt to your avocado, I mean. I'm not so sure, sure about okay. that. Mm. Okay, but I can well, see vegetables like... in the in the. Yeah, it's just for um, garnishing. Okay, for garnishing. Okay. All right. If you're just joining us, people, this morning with me is Chef Debbie. She's in the background, of course, trying to set things up. We're having an amazing breakfast recipe this morning. I am so excited about it that Yomi even had to join. Oh yeah. In like. I, I had to. <laughs> And uh, so we are having avocado spread with spiced ram meats or muttons on a garlic toast, mm. people. So, um, and of course, yes, the main um, ingredients we're working with this morning, of course, our bread is here. And um, yeah, so basically, and of so course, we have our glass of a fresh orange juice. Imagine all of this going in. Guests, <laughs> yeah. so, do you need no, to move not... these out of the way? Yes, please. Thank yeah, you so very much. That. All right. So, got, did you actually have ram meat yesterday, um, Chef Debbie? Um, well, I got some from a family Muslim friend, so I had okay. to keep them. Although my eyes, I wanted to eat them, but uh, no, I needed to keep them to do mm. this recipe. Oh, 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 for us on Wake Up Nigeria, that's yeah. so thoughtful. Mm. I mean, these are the things we do for you watching us at home. I mean, is that, a not, is that not, not enough reason to want to stay glued to wake up Nigeria? Yes, the indeed. The kind of sacrifices that we make on the show for you. Mm. I mean, it's amazing, right? Yeah, so um, I think about now we're going to be... Uh... Heading over to our first performance hmm. for the day. But he's, of course, standing by and getting yeah, he's, ready. He's getting ready. He's yeah. getting ready, getting mic'd. Yeah, getting so mic'd, yeah. Oh. Yeah, of course. Okay, nice so something flow. happened yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So um, I was really hungry for ram meat yesterday, and then my husband got a call from a friend, a Muslim friend, mm. and I told him, please don't come back without ram meat. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? I basically 
interesting oh, the poor man. I'm yeah. like, no come back to South Aramis, you know. And then he just laughed. But apparently, his friends actually sent some. Okay, so he was doing like know, a, an actual of... you know, celebration. Maybe. Yeah, he was okay. doing like an actual celebration. He wanted us to go together, but I'm like, nah. Does this bring baby meat. girl ain't going anywhere. <laughs> I'm going to stay in this house, but actually. Just bring the meat. Yeah, so I eventually, you know, had ramen. Finally yesterday. had ramen. Yeah, and I even had, um, I brought some to the office this morning. Ooh, okay. Yeah, okay. it was very well spiced and um, well fried, really mm. nice. I enjoyed very it. Very good, very good. I enjoyed it. So, so, anyway, you, so it's going to be. Since you didn't have any, you yeah. eventually have. You know, a little song. bit of that. Yeah, that, that's good. With that's our good. breakfast this morning. Yeah. Yes, our first performer for the day is ready for you people, and he's with Mary. Hello, Mary. All right, thank you so much. Okay, his name is Hot Ismail. He's a singer, songwriter, and producer who has released a decent number of solo records and fixtures. Now, since joining his record label, he's offered his production and singing prowess to artists like Solid Star and Duncan Mighty. He will be performing No One Else, the remix though, and I'm talking about Ida Hams. Yes, yeah. yeah. I'm sure when you hear the heart is smile, you're like, okay, okay. Uh, this looks like Ida Hams. Yes, it is yeah. Ida Hams. How are you doing today? I'm fine. I'm good. Great to have you on the show. Yes. I okay, am. so No One Else. You wrote No One Else? Yeah, I wrote it. I'm featuring Tenny. Featuring Tenny? Yeah. Okay. So that's one of the collaborations you've yeah, done yeah, so far? Yeah, yeah, the remix. Okay, okay. Uh, so um, your music career is something that has spanned over years, but you went professional just about three years ago. Yeah. What has it been like between three years ago and now? It's been fun. Mm. You know, you know what, whatever you know how to do best, there's no effort in doing what you know how to do best. So it's, for me, it's been, it's been fun. It's been amazing. Mm. It's, <laughs> It's effortless, uh, effortlessly, like putting work together and you know trying to create things and bring the best out of you. So. Now, besides uh, Tenny, what other, or rather, which other Nigerian artists would you like to do um, collaborations with? Uh, yeah, I've done. Um, my album will be out soon. I just dropped my EP titled Amenable and um, it's titled Amenable means king Amenable. in okay. my in my dialect yeah. where, where I'm from, the job part of the the country. Okay. So uh, I've done a couple of um, collaborations with some earliest artists. Uh, okay. That that would be my album, but I don't want to say it now. I don't, I don't want to let it cut out of the bag. Let me just. Okay. So he's trying <laughs> to keep the suspense for his album. <laughs> he's not going to keep us in suspense though, because he has to perform now. So take it away. All right. <laughs> I love the best one to use your panto for money, for money, oh, eh, eh. See, I know say people, they jealousy. Well, seeing a brand new day is always a reason to smile and be happy. Yes, and mm. in fact, the fact that you just woke up, you opened your eyes, you could breathe in clean air, and you could get up out of that bed, just be so, so grateful and yeah. thankful. Now, knowing there are just two more hours left to wake up Nigeria is another great reason to be happy. I'm just saying, let's just drop that there. We're right there for you every single morning. Yes, mm. indeed. I just want to say that the color. What? The way it's popping on the screen the pink? right now. Oh, thank you. It's, uh, thank you. Is that pink? Yeah. Uh, 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 really? You know I mean? <laughs> I know there's pink? hot pink and then there's another pink and so then there's a third I'm not pink. really sure that the pink you're even seeing on screen is the pink I'm seeing, but... Yeah, uh, it's... because it looks like hot pink here, but on the screen it looks yeah. a little bit... Yeah, I like yeah. pink. Pink is a, is a good color to start your week with, actually. Yeah. I like that. Anyway, but um, thanks thank so you, much yeah, for the compliment. Yeah. That's well, very thank rare. Thank you for tuning in. Rare. <laughs> my compliment is rare. Yeah, on my outfit. Hello. Outfits, the most so, you know. But thank you I don't know much. what you're talking about, but my name is Yomi Open, <laughs> in case you didn't know. And I'm Titi Lai Oyinson. We're streaming live right now, TV Continental. Oh, I keep getting it. I keep mixing it up. It's now TVC Entertainment yeah. TV. Yeah, brand new, fresh website, fresh like hot agege bread. Please check it out. And of course, stream with us on Facebook Live. And uh, that's at TVC Connect. Please send in those comments, prayers, 
you know, mm -hmm. pictures, videos. Use our hashtag, Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Now, of course, our app is also available for download on the Google Play Store and the Apple iStore. Now, mm. this app allows you to watch us from anywhere in the world. Mm. Yes, and indeed. Yeah, really, mm. really nice. As it's long really as you nice have app, yeah. internet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have to add that. It's been, you know, quite a day already, mm -hmm. but a lot of work has already started in the kitchen. Chef Debbie yeah. is here. And MM is right there with Yeah, you. I already had a little taste of what, you know, some of the things that they had have in there. Uh, you're and just while, to, while MM was away. Trying to make me right, hungry. Oh, he did. <laughs> I, he did. Imagine, I MM, I well, thought you this, were there protecting the food. I was, I was yeah, there. this is Chef Debbie. And this morning, she's got quite a spread, as you can see. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't even contain myself. And yet, I am not the only one standing here. <laughs> yes, but anyways, you have to please... Stay locked on to Wake Up Nigeria to actually find out what we are making this morning, people. It's pretty exciting, pretty amazing. You don't want to miss any bit of it. Yeah, looking forward to it. Yes, indeed. Now, this morning, we have Dr. Obin Na, who is the founder of iMasters Eye Clinic and I See Foundation. Now, he will be talking about the eye condition known as cataracts. As cataracts. Mm -hmm. It's honestly something scary, actually. I don't know anything to do with the eyes. You just really want to have as much information as possible, so you need to stay tuned for that one. Mm -hmm. And to commemorate Breastfeeding Month, which is the month of August, certified breastfeeding specialist Titi Lyo Medoye is going to be joining us to demonstrate the proper way to breastfeed a baby. So a lot of people are doing it wrong, mm. apparently and complaining that it's too hard, but they're just not doing it the right way, apparently. Yeah, so, so. breastfeeding month is important to, for people to learn all this. There'll be a demonstration today okay. on that. So for a second performance this morning, Afro-pop singer Toonsoft will be joining us for uh, a delivery, a nice one. And in celebrating our own and what they've been getting up to both locally and internationally, we have Basil Okwara and Ada Okwareke. They'll be joining us to talk about their commendable achievements, even though they're so young. Now, the lead counselor at Marriage Matters, Bosse Fireimi, will be joining us uh, to talk about maturity in marriage. It's a, it's a new thing, but you know, it, I think it's something that you know, people mm. would want to, uh, people who have been married uh, would want to hear. So does maturity have to do with age or not? Mm. Or maybe time that. spent in the marriage, whatever <laughs> it is, uh, uh, Ms. Fireimi is going to be talking to us. And lastly, we'll be joined by seasoned filmmaker Imo Umoren, who is the first filmmaker to make a silent black and white film in Nollywood. Oh, wow. goodness me. No one that, mo that movie won award. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Because it's mm. quite touching, even watching the Even trailer. the shots, the yeah. angles that I was seeing just from that short clip, you can see how um, artistic it is. Um, just from the shots, you can see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd like oh, yeah. to ask him a, a, a bunch of questions. Yeah. While we're um, on coffee break, so I'll just quickly mention it. Um, just three things. Today, what's happening today? Today is World Calligraphy Day. Today is Social Security Day. Mm. Uh, but the one I actually wanted us to talk about then, but we'll probably talk about it in the third Later. hour, yeah. is Tattoo Removal Day. Hey! <laughs> so, uh, I don't. I can already. I can hear the Martians working in MM's mm. head. But well, that's all right. We'll all talk right, about that later. We have to go later. to the news now. Okay. All right. Yes, we are in the kitchen, people, and of course, it's Chef Debbie in the building, yeah. in the studio this morning. And this morning she's making something very different, unique and delicious, people. Um, this morning she's making avocado spread with spiced ram meat on garlic toast. Let me say that again, just in case. <laughs> I know it's quite a mouthful. Yeah. So we're having an avocado spread with spiced ram meat on a garlic toast. And the ingredients are on your screen right there, but Chef Debbie, 
Let's talk about the ingredients so that people understand what we are really working with this morning. Okay, so this is bread. Yeah. So the idea is not just eating bread with butter or mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. You can do something with your bread. So I'm doing a garlic toast. So what okay. I'm doing with the bread is I'm just putting some butter and some garlic. Okay. I already blended the garlic yeah. just to give it the flavor and the taste to be really different from the normal bread we eat. Okay. So for the um, ram mm, meat, that's um, mutton. mutton, yeah. So it's already chopped, tiny chopped, mm -hmm. and spiced. I spiced with um, um, seasoning, thyme, curry, and salt. Okay. Then I have the avocado. Okay. Which I'll mash. I'm going to mash them. Okay. And add in some lemon. I'll mix it with mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. Okay. Yeah. Then the egg. I'll just be doing a sunny side egg with this. Oh, it. nice. Then. The, um, this is curry leaf, curry leaf. and tomatoes just for garnishing. Hmm. Like I said, people, <laughs> our breakfast this morning is a mouthful, literally, people. We ain't joking on the show this morning. And Chef Debbie, of course, came prepared. And as you can see, she has started working up our garlic toast, right? Yeah. So just in case you didn't get um, the process, what we did was we, we have our blended garlic here and butter. Yeah, right? Yeah. So just take us through the process so people actually really understand what you did okay, with the Okay, let me just toast. do it again. Show so, them so that they can, yes. Exactly. Let me take it fresh bread. Mm. And please, when working with your toast, if you have to make use of your fry pan, yeah, it's it important to use a non-stick non pan. pan. Yeah, so that your bread doesn't burn and, or, and then it. it sticks to the pan. So it's safe to use a non-stick pan. Okay, yeah. so please show us. So I'm going to use, I'm going to um, put butter on it. Okay. Is there any other spread you can work with? Of course, you can use um, mayonnaise. You can use uh, the, we have salted and unsalted butter. butter. So okay. anyone you want. This is just the normal bread spread. Okay. Then I'm going to add little garlic. garlic. It's already blended. Okay. So I'm going to add just little. Ensure you spread evenly. Mm. So it's important you blend, not grate. You can grate. Mm. You can just that some people don't really like. Eating you, if you grate, you're going to be eating those um, little yeah, chunks, chunks of, yeah. of garlic. Yeah. So it depends so on it what really... you want. If it's just me, I'm going to grate. Mm. And then you also get the juice from blending it. Exactly. Like you get the juice from it, which is really nice. Okay, let me get a plate so that I could help with mashing up the avocado. Okay. What are we adding to the avocado after okay, mashing Okay, I'll it? just mash, then add in me some add my mayonnaise, mayonnaise and, and lemon. Yeah. Then some black pepper and salt. Okay. All right, great stuff happening here on the show, people. This is Chef Debbie, and this morning she's making avocado spread with spiced ram meat on a garlic toast. People, we'll be right back. Stay with us, don't go anywhere. Hello and welcome back. It's still Wake Up Nigeria. Now, our health topic this morning is the very serious condition known as cataracts. Now, for this topic, we had to bring in someone special. We have with us Dr. Obina Awiaka. His working experience spans over 13 plus years in both the public and private sectors, within which he founded the Eye Masters Eye Clinic and uh, so much more. There's so much more to <laughs> you that we can't, if we keep going, we won't have enough time to get to the topic. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much, Titi. All right, so cataracts. Uh, for those that don't know who have never heard about it before, what exactly is cataract? Um, basically, uh, cataract is uh, the clouding of the lens. Okay. Uh, what are the lenses? This is a uh, a uh, normal eye, what the eye looks like mm -hmm. inside the eyeballs. Okay. And uh, we have the frontal part of the eye, which is the part you see. Okay. And this is called the cornea. Okay. Okay. So behind the cornea, mm. we have what we call the lens. Okay. Yes. So that's the lens. That is the lens. Wow. Okay. This Let's is... hold it down a little. Exactly. Like right here. So this is the lens. Yes. Right here. Yes. So this is what you're talking about. Exactly. So it has nothing to do with the outer part here? Not at all. It's this part right here? Exactly. Okay, so how does, what causes the clouding of that lens? Okay, um, this lens is actually made up of protein and water. Okay. And so with time, sometimes, especially over age, mm. the protein begins to come together and okay. begins to frost. 
Oh, wow. Yes, and uh, it begins to cause a bit of uh, uh, clogs mm. and turns yellow okay. and later on brown. Okay. And because this is no longer transparent, mm. remember the function of this lens is to bend light mm. to the back of the eye, which okay. is the retina. Mm. So this, when this clouding begins to happen, mm. light is being obscured. Okay. Yes, and so you, dis you discover that you can no longer see as you normally see. Okay. And that is what uh, mm. cataract is all about. So this is not something that develops overnight, is it? Or... Not at all. Like I said earlier on, most times uh, cataract is due to aging. Okay. Aging. Okay. And uh, when people turn to turn 50, okay. usually that is when this reaction begins to happen. Okay. And uh, it uh, happens in most people. Mm. But there are some kinds of cataract that... Mm. Uh, uh, does not come with aging. Okay. Some those are the, called the traumatic cataract okay. and the congenital cataract. Okay. The traumatic is basically due to injury, mm. especially uh, you had an injury earlier on in life and wasn't properly treated and affected the lens. Okay. Yes, so it can cause cater cataract, traumatic cataract. Okay. So I know that as humans we can't see inside our eye and know when it's clouding. But no. what what are the signs and symptoms? to know that it's, it's cataract. Okay, it's just like you're driving mm. uh, and uh, something splashes on your windscreen. You oh, definitely wow. will know that mm. there is something blocking the windscreen. Oh, wow. Exactly. Okay. So once cataract begins to form, mm. it gives you signs like blurry vision, mm. sometimes double vision okay. and all that. Mm. So once you notice those signs, yes. I, I know a lot of people have some traditional methods that they, they do. Yes. They, they wash it with water. They, some people put onion water. They put, you know, all sorts of things in the eyes. What is the first thing that you expect someone to do? Uh, basically, what we recommend is that everyone should have their eyes tested yearly. Okay. You must make sure you see your optometrist every year to test your eyes. Mm. And uh, most of this cataract can be detected in a, in a very early stage, mm. even before it begins to give you the signs mm. and when you go for your yearly testing. And okay. immediately the doctor tests and discovers you having cataract, mm. attention will now be given to it. Okay, so now that's the scary part that attention part, because mm. you just showed us exactly how far in the lens actually is. Yes. So it's like behind, behind, uh, what's this part called again? The cornea? This is the no, cornea. The cornea. Yes, the white part right is behind. called the So cornea. how is the doctor going to get behind all this to get rid of cataracts? What are they going to, are they going to scrape it off? What are they going to do to it? Okay, uh, the basic treatment for mm. cataract is surgery. Okay. It's actually surgery. When, when this cataract has caused blindness or mm. visual impairment, mm. you have to actually remove it. Wow. And yes, and one of the most common methods of removing it is called phaco emulsification. Okay. So what happens is that this lens mm. is turned to emulsion. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. And a little incision is put here, mm. and this thing is sucked out. Okay. And when it's done, we now have what we call an intraocular lens, a very tiny plastic lens, okay. which is now placed in replacement of these natural lenses, and it okay. does the same function. So it's a synthetic replacement exactly. for the lens that for was there. For the lenses, there. yes. So there's, if any doctor tells you, don't worry, the lens will get better, we will do something, it's not going to get better. No, not at all. When, it has to be replaced. Once cataract starts, mm. it's going to take its time okay. and is eventually going to cause full visual impairment or blindness. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Uh, is there a time frame between when you notice it and, and the blindness part? No, there's really no time frame, and it's sometimes it spans a lot of years. Mm. And what people can do, basically, is to slow the process if they don't want to have mm. surgery immediately. Okay. And uh, slowing the process is basically by eating vitamins, food rich in vitamin, because okay. the process of the protein mm. turning to cloud mm. is actually oxidation. Oh, wow. Yes, so okay. when you take foods that are rich in antioxidants, hmm. that can help slow the, the process. process down. Yes. Wow, okay. Antioxidant-rich foods and exactly. drinks are good for people. I, I heard there's a particular vitamin that's good for the eyes as well, 
I'm not sure which one that is. Is it A? Or? A lot of them are good for okay. the eye. Okay. But for cataract, vitamin C is very good, which you okay. get from your oranges. Okay. Yes. All right. Beautiful. Thank you so much, doctor. Now, uh, I know there are probably a lot of people worried about the surgery. Mm, okay. Just as quickly as possible, what are the risks? The cataract surgery is a very simple surgery. Okay. It's, uh, it's actually a kind of surgery you can have the same day and go back home that same day. Amazing. Exactly. Amazing. All right. Exactly. So there's not that much to worry no, about. No, nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. We have about. to wrap up this conversation, but please mm. talk, talk to us on social media about what you think and uh, any questions you have, we'll try and get doctor uh, to answer. Once again, thank you so much, Dr. Thank Obina, you, for coming to see us. Thank you. We have to take on uh, another conversation when it comes to nutrition, and uh, MM is on standby to take that. Thank you very much, Titi. Yes, from one healthy conversation to another, Titi Layo is a certified breastfeeding specialist and the founder and CEO of Milky Express. And because, of course, it's the month of August dedicated to breastfeeding mothers, yeah, <laughs> we shall be talking about the um, enlightening us, sorry, on the proper ways to breastfeed and feed a baby. <laughs> this conversation is a very interesting one, I yeah, know, because then you have, uh, during Omugwa, you hear mothers or mother-in-laws say, carry the baby on this hand. Don't carry the baby on this hand. Carry the baby this way. Mm -hmm. Don't lie down carrying your baby, like breastfeeding your baby. Yeah. What is the proper way to carry your child? when breastfeeding. When breastfeeding. Well, thank you so much for having me, first of all. Um, I know so there are so many myths and there are so many stories with regards to breastfeeding, yes. how to feed, how to hold the baby, when to feed the baby, how much to feed the baby. There's just so much story around yeah. it. And um, from my study um, what I, and from my you know, practice, what I've realized is that babies need to be fed the way babies need to be fed. And I'm saying that because every child is unique mm. and every child has unique needs. And I always say that breastfeeding is a relationship between a mother and, and a, a baby. Child, yeah. So um, a mother could have had you know, an easy time breastfeeding one baby, mm. but it's not necessarily going to be the same with another baby because mm. that baby is different True. and baby has different temperaments and all of that. But to look at the um, specifics of breastfeeding, when we talk about breastfeeding effectively, mm -hmm. that is feeding your baby properly, there are a couple of things that you want to look at. Okay. So I brought here <laughs> a yeah. sample of a breast I and I brought it that. because it's important for us to be able to know what side of the breast we're looking at okay. and where the baby needs to be feeding. Okay. So this is the nipple point. Okay. And a lot of mothers just stuff the nipple in the baby's mouth. Okay. And when you do this, you will have issues breastfeeding. One, you would have, you would experience um, nipple damage. Okay or the baby will not even get enough milk. So when you're breastfeeding, it's important to get both the nipple and the areola into oh, the baby's mouth. Not just right? the nipple. So not just the nipple, but oh. also the areola. So you want to be able to have as, as you know, this much in, in the, the baby's, baby's mouth. mouth. Mm -hmm. So when you have this much in the baby's mouth, your nipple is at the back of the baby's mouth okay. in the soft palate, yeah. so it doesn't hurt. Okay, and it doesn't hurt you, the it mother. It doesn't hurt you, the mother. Mm. So lots of times we find that when, you're, when the mother is having pain, the baby is just holding on to the nipple mm. and the hard palate and the gum is pressing, pressing down on, on the it. nipple. Yeah. So if it's in the baby's mouth well enough, you know, you wouldn't experience that pain and the baby will be able to get enough milk during, during breastfeeding. breastfeeding. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, so another thing to look out for is that the baby's mouth should be open wide around the nipple. The nipple. You know, and like I said, because babies come differently and breasts come differently, okay. breast comes in different shapes and sizes, okay, you so know. Let's talk so about how to carry your baby when breastfeeding. When breastfeeding, Very okay. Well. So there are I different positions, way. okay. So there are different positions that you hold your baby in, and the most common one is this. Yes. However, there are so many other positions, and those positions would determine, you know, like would, would, would come up based on maybe how you feel, how the mother feels, or certain conditions with the baby. Okay. So for a mother who has had a C-section, for example, breastfeeding like this would be difficult yes. because of the incision. incision yeah. Good. So the baby can be moved to the side. Oh, really? So the baby can breastfeed on the side. So you have to just you have, you have to hold the so baby's um, exactly. head with just like this. both hands. Exactly. You, don't, you actually hand. don't have to use both hands, just okay. one hand. So you can have a pillow to support you okay. and the baby's on the side like this. Okay. So you're holding the baby on the neck. Yes. 
just yes. at the base of the head. On the base of the point. head, it, okay. So the baby has the access to move his head in whatever oh. direction that he or she pleases. I also hear that and it's can not also safe the for your baby's head to be in motion when breastfeeding. When breastfeeding, exactly. So that's why we put the hand at the back of the base mm. of the head. So we're able to the steady. Motion, yeah. Exactly. So you can do that on both sides. Okay. Another way is to, this is called a cross cradle. Cross cradle. Yes. Okay, when you do this. Yes, on okay. the other side. So okay. the baby is on this side. That's for C section. Um, both C section. Okay. C section so can and, use okay, this okay. and uh, regular delivery okay. can use this. Okay. Um, you know, we also advise for a side position for mothers who have very large breasts. Okay. Because the baby has enough room to move to for move air. For, oh. As against being here and the baby is stuffed Ooh. and you know. Quickly, let's talk about stuffed. lying down because a lot of mothers have issues with that. Like your baby doesn't get enough nutrients or doesn't get enough milk when you lie down breastfeeding your baby. Is that advisable? Yes, mothers can lie down to breastfeed their baby. Okay. However, we say if you're a deep sleeper and if you don't know how to sleep peacefully, mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't advise you to lie down and feed your baby because we don't want you to move, move and, and hit the baby and everything. Baby exactly. And but if you, but it's, it's a good way to breastfeed, especially for oh. moms who have had a C-section as well. And okay. for moms who are particularly tired, mm. you know, it helps you. The baby is re rested, Very the baby is comfortable. You. you are comfortable. You know, and then you can breast, go ahead and breastfeed for as long as you want Thank to. you so much. I have been so, like, I'm sure that a lot of breastfeeding mothers out there have been enlightened this morning. And, of course, we, we will continue this conversation, yes. you yes, know, till the end of the month. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Tsui. you for having me. And I'm going to keep this, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's so much more coming up on the show, people. Stay with us, don't go anywhere. All right, so uh, it's still the holidays for all the kids, and uh, I'm excited because I have two young geniuses with me here, and I'm excited to meet them. Now, children are the leaders of tomorrow, and of course, these amazing kids are here with, uh, with us in the studio today. Everyone is excited. They want to meet them. They want to find out uh, what they're up to, and uh, they have uh, been taking, uh, changing their own world in different ways, and just basically doing different things. Now, Basil Opara is this young man right here. He's a nine-year-old mobile game app creator. Wow. And Ada Oparike is also a nine-year-old who has received awards of excellence uh, numerous times. And she is currently a member of the United States Gifted and Talented Students. Wow. Hey, guys. So how's it going? Tell me how your holidays have been. Oh, my holidays have been good. Going on the plane, yeah. But the plane is just so bad. My ears—they're <laughs> still having problems even today. Yeah. So, but, but you, so today you, I blew my nose, and yeah. then the nose it started like opening up because the plane closed them. <laughs> oh and yeah, 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 yeah. So you have to do that. You have to hold yeah. your nose when you're on the plane. But it hurts. Uh, yeah, it does. It does. Uh, but you, after you do it a few times, and it then gets better. But still, how are you? I'm fine. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, so. Are you excited to be in the studio with us today? Yeah. Very nice. Okay. So you guys are coders. You're a gifted child uh, over in the United States, and you're a coder as well, and it's exciting. So tell us about coding. Coding is like creating things, and when you code and tell them what to do, hmm. then you can press something, and then it starts it starts functioning by itself, and then you create mobile apps as well, right? Yes. Hmm. Excellent. I'm going to come back to you about those mobile apps because I really want to know how you do it at nine years old. Now, of course, either you two uh, are a coder as well. Yeah, so when I code, I first of all, I will need myself a Chromebook mm. and this, and I'll need a little bit of wires. Mm. And then, like, it's like I had to work with the wires when I was in GT. Mm. So I had to use this manual to put the wires in these kind, you know, like a computer mm -hmm. chips? That's kind of what I had, but it was like a different color. So I had my computer chip. I had these little ports where I put these wires. Mm -hmm. So then I had to connect them to the right spot so it will work. Mm. So there are like 16 different ones or 15 different ones you can pick from. I picked like number 11 or number 13. Mm. So then this one was like 
um, it's like it's a screen. So mm. I so I had to um, attach it to the computer. So it, so I type in what I want to, for the screen to have, mm. and so then I turn it on, and then it'll start flashing. So like you know, what? it'll just show up mm. like that, and then it'll start moving away. Then it'll so come back actually, to the other so side. So you would mix those selections so that you can produce a certain result yeah. at the end of the day. Now, Basil, you um, create mobile apps, right? And you you have an aim. You, so you let, how do you then start with your mobile apps when you want to create it? I start with opening the app, then I just then start writing the codes and click and drag them. Mm. Well, you're saying it because and you're making it sound very easy, and I know it's not that simple. But I how did you the learn? And okay, yeah, yeah. The background. Okay, so how did then you learn? How did you learn how to code? Where, where did you start from? I started from a boot camp here in Lagos. Okay, so it was a boot camp here in Lagos. Yes. And so, what were the things that they taught you at the boot camp? They taught me how to build games from scratch. Hmm. So you can build games now from scratch yeah. at nine years old. How long did it take you to learn? It took me five days. Five days? So just five days and you've, you've been able to at least learn a few of these things. Uh, with you, how long did it take you to learn this whole process? Like you, you've been talking to me about wires and putting together a Chromebook Actually, and all of that. it was just one week of school, hmm. like five days of like in the weekdays. Hmm. That's, how, that's how I learned real fast. Because we have it on, mon on Mondays and Wednesdays. So then, after school, I would always tell my mom about what happened. I would always tell her about what's happening in GT. She'll be so impressed and so proud. Yeah. Now, if you wanted to teach a young child, so both of you are nine years old, and say a six-year-old or a seven-year-old comes to you and they say, "Teach me the code." What is the first thing? <laughs> what's the first thing you would tell? that six-year-old? Let me start with you first and then you, you, you then answer. What, tell, what, what, what would you say to them? I'll tell the six-year-old to follow me to where I build my games, then mm. I teach him and explain them to him. Okay, so what, 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 what's the first thing you would tell him when you want to teach him? That was the first thing you would want the six-year-old to know? I tell him to choose a sprite and background. A sprite and a background. And then what's the next thing? Then code, emotions and the looks motions and the looks and you understand what he's saying because i don't understand what he's saying yes. <laughs> so well, what would you say, tell a six-year-old if I'm they wanted used to learn to little um i'm used for people who, to talk very low mm. like in my class that's how they are yeah. they always talk so low but when they're talking with their friends they're so loud yeah <laughs> that happens a lot so uh, and that happens with really young people as well yeah. so but if you wanted to talk to a six-year-old about coding about all the things that you've learned where would you start so first of all, I would say you need to think about what you want to do. Then after, you need a computer, mm. at least a computer or this set that will help you like code. Mm. And then I'll teach them the physics of coding. So the physics of coding, you'll have a lot of um, volts. You need volts, like five, there's five volts. You use five volts, you connect it to another part. Mm. So I'm like sometimes when I was doing it, there were like numbers. I had the menu, like I said before, you had to copy them. They even showed you a picture, a diagram of it. Mm. Wow, so this is amazing because I mean, you are uh, one of the talented kids uh, over in the US. And so what do you guys do when you get together? Oh, so sometimes we have different events in GT. Mm. So when it's STEM time, the other kids who don't go to GT or have GT on another day, since there's like 17 or 18 or 19 people in my class that go to GT. Mm. So then the people will, the people that do not go to GT, they'll stay and do STEM. But then the people who have GT today, they have to go down to the challenge lab, which is downstairs. Mm. The challenge job used to just be like this place where you go to make stuff. Like people who don't go to GT, they have to they go to the challenge lab if they get yeah. enough points or something. All right. So that that's go. that's really really exciting. I mean, so I have Basil here, and mm -hmm. you know you're already creating games at nine years old. And very quickly, as we round off, I just want to ask you. So what are you gonna be? Uh, in the next few years, what do you see yourself doing uh, as a coder, as a gamer? Are you going to be creating games? What, what, what exactly do you want to be doing going for the world? Going to be creating robots. Robots. So that's where you're going. So it's not even games. You, you want to be creating robots and um, artificial intelligence and things like that, right? Yeah. Very exciting. Very exciting. How about you? What do you, what do you want to uh, do? Hmm. 
So maybe I'm really I, I like gaming. I mm. like playing video um, online computer games. Mm. So that means I'll either be a gamer on YouTube or I can also be a doctor and help other people when they get sick because I want because it's really sad to see somebody go or die, even if they're not even a part of your family. Mm. Seeing it on the news, you're just feeling so bad that somebody dies at such a young age. Wow, you guys, I'm so inspired. And uh, I'm going to be taking some uh, uh, coding lessons with yeah. you guys before the holidays are yeah. over. Yeah. But you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. Basil, young man, and this young lady right here, give me that. Okay. So we're going to be uh, heading over to a performance right now. Amazing. Hello and good morning. It's still your favorite breakfast show. Yeah. Wake up, Nigeria. Well, the holidays are over for some people, mm. but the kids are still around. We just had some two amazing, well, I don't want to call them talented kids. Yeah. You know, they're, they're super smart, super smart. They're coders and gamers. Yes, indeed. And they just joined us just now. I hope you didn't miss it. But anyway, <laughs> if you're not at work already, we hope that... Uh, uh, we want to let you know that you're living the life. <laughs> you're it's good, a you know, right just now. you know, still in bed, flipping the channel, probably uh, drinking some coffee. So it's good. Now, if you haven't been watching the show for the past two hours, all the more reason for you to stay right there and uh, wait for the rest of the show. My name is Siti Lyo Oinson. And I'm Yomi Open. Now you can watch us live right now at tvcentertainment.tv mm. and on Facebook at TVC Connect. Send in your comments using the hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC. Now the TVC app is available for download. You need to go to an Android or iOS store right now. Download this app and watch us and so many other great TVC programs from anywhere in the world. Yeah. yeah? Now, uh, mm. maturity in marriage. I heard that for the first time yesterday. <laughs> Maturity. And, uh, one of our producers, Alami, they was trying to... You know, like, break it down. Well, <laughs> he was trying to lecture us, yeah, essentially, uh, on wow. marriage. Wow, you know. that word, lecture. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't know how long he's been married. Anyway, Boss <laughs> Fiery, who is the lead counsellor at Marriage Matters, will be here shortly to talk about maturity in marriage. And lastly, we'll be joined by award-winning seasoned filmmaker, Imo Moran. We have a problem. Herbert Macaulay. Today, we march to the government house. Ah, what a period wow. piece. That yes. is so well shot. <laughs> Almost painfully well done. You know, like, it's so. even more difficult to shoot um, medieval or like historical films. Historical yeah. films. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. There's a lot of work, costuming especially. Yeah. Yeah. Costuming, makeup, set I mean, design, set design, <laughs> lighting. You yeah. have to. Yeah, oh, it has yeah. to be really good, especially in these times. People yeah. come after you. Yeah. Not, but why do you put that? It's just like Game of Thrones that they were seeing the uh, cup of. Coffee. They saw a coffee cup in the shop, <laughs> yeah, and they saw a plastic oh, well. bottle. Yes, mm. on the, on the as I, I well. think the two biggest Attention things. Attention to detail. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think the two well. biggest things are costumes and, and set design. And set design. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there are certain things that you would think uh, existed mm. 100 or 200 years and ago they can't that find don't exist at all. Yeah. Uh, like this kind of smooth table. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, set design is a big deal. Yeah, for, so for um, quickly, you know, there was something that was also trending we didn't get to. Um, so Caffey. apparently, yes, Kathy in the, in the Big Brother house um, has been called out by the Metropolitan Police of London. She didn't work for them. She actually is a member of staff uh, and she apparently she took <laughs> unpaid leave. Yeah. But she was supposed to take permission to go on such a program. And... Um, yeah. So yeah, some reports report, say that yeah. some reports say that they had they had that discussion with her, mm. and she was told not to to go. go. 
oh, wow. for the Big Brother oh, yeah, show. Yes. Mm. Yeah. She was and told before, not to go for the report. Mm. And uh, now, yeah. because of her, you know, um, her activities, activities extracurricular activities, activities, you know, <laughs> um, intercausal activities in the house. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so they're basically, they are getting a backlash oh because boy. she's not just working with them. She's also like a poster child for the yeah, African. She's a poster girl yes. for the Afri for the African, for the black, yeah, for the African, uh, black police black officers. Police. Yes. Yeah. So okay. you know so, they are getting a backlash. Well, the thing is, they're having a negative have, effect yeah, yeah, I think on she, them. She, she should have thought about that before going in. Before, um, before she going she there. might get sacked, and she won't be the only one. A firefighter mm. got sacked for going on Love Island, so she might get sacked. She'll be lucky not. And the thing is, she has has no clue what's yeah. going on. Really? Yeah. Now, you know, Wednesdays are about, uh, a lot of times about relationships, about marriage. And my guest this morning is Bosse Farami, who is the lead counselor at Marriage Matters with over 13 years of counseling experience. And she's easily able to let couples create a blissful union. Uh, for this morning, she's going to be talking about maturity in marriage, which I think is very, very important uh, because when you say maturity in marriage, people immediately uh, connect that with time spent in marriage. So if we've been in marriage for 10, 15 years, that means we're mature. Is that what it really means? Okay. Um, I'm looking at maturity from uh, a different angle. It's not about the maturity of the marriage, mm. but of the individuals in the marriage. Right. Because um, it's the people in the marriage that makes the marriage. Mm. So if you have immature people in a marriage, I don't think the marriage can be termed mature, irrespective of the donkey years you spent in there. Mm. So maturity can be in terms of age, um, uh, the calendar years you have been marking mm. as an individual, so you, are, you say you are 30 years old, as a 30 year old adult, you are supposed to be matured because mm. your body is fully formed, you have everything, mm. so you look like an adult. And unfortunately, a lot of people just feel once I am like that, mm. then I'm okay. Marriage should be the next thing. Meanwhile, maturity is required in other aspects that is not just physical. Mm. And in my experience working with couples, it saddens me when I see that these people are so immature. Even <laughs> they, though they are a certain age, maybe even 35 or yeah, over, over but 35. they are immature. So um, psychologically, you want to measure somebody's maturity by the person's ability to respond and react to the environment. Mm. So you know what is right and what is wrong mm. in certain environment. So for a two-year-old, if you bring in a two-year-old here, the child will jump from this seat to this seat. Mm. And because the child is just like having fun, he's not aware that this is a set where you are supposed to behave. Mm. Now you have an adult that also will not know that we are in the public, we shouldn't argue. Mm. So the, the, they are in a relationship, but they still throw tantrums. A child will throw tantrums. If a child wants something from you, mm. the child will scream and shout and make trouble until you give it. Okay, so you know that that child psychologically is not as matured mm. because he's not factoring the environment into, into the behavior. Exactly. So that, that's where I, I wanted to come in because I wanted to ask that, okay, so as a marriage counselor, you, you're, you're, you meet a couple uh, who are married for you know, whatever number of years. What are the things that you would then look out for to be able to say that, okay, these people have attained maturity in marriage? Okay. So my own job will not be necessarily to say they are matured or they are not matured. Mm. It is mostly their lack of maturity that will bring them to me. Mm. Because if they are matured, most of the time you should be able to sit down and talk like adults. Mm. But when you can't talk like adults, you can't be reasonable. One person is so self-conceited, feels I can't be wrong. Mm. You know, it, that talks about being emotionally matured because mm. if you are emotionally matured, you know that the world is not just about me. It's about us. Mm. 
So the person that lacks emotional maturity is very selfish, kind of. It's me, 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 me. <laughs> it's not about you. So in a relationship or a marriage, that's not going to work. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why they come for counseling, because mm. they just will not be able to navigate the emotional issues that they are having. Yeah. Now, these emotional issues, because one of the things that I know uh, uh, are a lot of um, thorny issues within yeah. marriages, you know, the emotions and th other things that have to do with decision making and, and all of that. Yeah. How do you then go to, so when a couple approaches you and they come, okay, this is the challenge we're having, how do you go about um, helping them resolve um, these issues and also then growing to maturity? Okay, so one thing that I would not naturally do is to say you guys are immature, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I won't put that in their face. Mm. And sometimes the couple themselves, maybe one party will be saying, tell him or tell her that he needs to grow up. Of course, I'm not going to throw that in your face, mm. but I will just teach you how to do relationship. Because if you do not know how to do relationship, then you will just be misbehaving and be throwing tantrums like a kid. Mm. You know, so I teach them conflict resolution guidelines that okay so when we have argument this is how we will play fair mm. we don't call names you know nobody is permitted to walk out and slam the door so if you need to um, go out and take a breather you can ask for permission oh this is getting intense can i please be excused mm. you know so and your partner is obliged to allow you do that. Mm. You will not go and stand at the door and say, no, you are going nowhere, mm. you know? So I teach them all those kind of how they will set rules so that they can actually learn to sit down and look at the issues like adults without you feel, feeling attacked mm. that every time somebody points out something to you, e -e -e, they are criticizing me, you know? You, you won't be overly defensive. Mm. So I teach them how not to stonewall. Stonewalling means you're just shutting down. Mm. Like, if the person like, let the person put head on the ground and to, you're not seeing, you're just there, yeah. you know? And then how to avoid being defensive, how to avoid being critical, and then to not uh, allow themselves to become resentful mm. of each other. So uh, my own job is to just teach them the skills mm. of communication, of conflict resolution, that will make them behave like adults. I like that you, you, you went into the angle of um, communication. And then you also talked about stonewalling. Because initially, you were talking about throwing tantrums. And there are some certain people who, uh, they don't throw tantrums, whether in public or in private. They just don't, they, they don't avoid talk. conflict. They don't want to talk. So yeah. how do you deal? So if, if a partner is dealing with someone who's like that, very oh. quiet, very reticent, doesn't express their feelings, just allows you to do what you like. How do you deal with that kind of situation? Okay, so that's um, a, a, a classic description of an emotional, immature person. Mm. So which are skills you need to learn? So even if a conversation is difficult, it takes certain skills from you to be able to face it. So mm. we have to teach them not to sweep their issues under the carpet. Mm. The, the issues won't go away. So there are conflict avoiders. People who just will want to go and bury their head in the sand and just wish that the thing would disappear. So you teach them how to confront issues in a safe way. Mm. So confronting issues doesn't mean that you have to carry a placard and say, I know go agree, I know go agree, you know, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. But being able to learn how to be assertive, how to be able to communicate your feelings, what you want, in a way that will show respect to your partner. Mm. Because a lot of times what people do is, you just want to say it the way you feel it. No, you are, you are such a slob. See, every, the room is so untidy. Mm. You throw your things everywhere. If you talk to me like that, I'll become defensive and mm. I'm going to not do what you want me to do. Mm. But if you say, oh babe, I would really appreciate if you can put your shoes in this corner, you know, or something like that, mm. then the person is not going to fight you. Mm. Even if the person feels, okay, you're pointing out my fault, but the person will not fight. So you need to teach people how to be able to say what they want, make a demand without being aggressive and be, without putting the other partner down. Wow, Boss if I may, this, uh, this is a deep conversation that we're having that I'm not sure we can finish this week. So hopefully, uh, maybe we'll look for another time where we can have more conversation. But we should uh, also take it on social media 
as well. So if you have any questions for Bossy Fire Me, I'm sure you can find her on social media or our own platforms at TVC Connect. Now it's time for us uh, to get more right now on Wake Up Nigeria. Thank you very much, Yomi. Interesting conversation there with Ms. Bosse. All right, here with me in the kitchen this morning is Chef Debbie. And quickly, yes, just to remind you people, we are making avocado spread with spiced meat, ram meats on garlic toast. And quickly, we'll just run through, you know, the process to where we're at. We just actually wanted you to catch, you know, on on everything we're doing here or having here for breakfast this morning, right? Yeah. So Debbie, quickly. So first, on. the um, garlic toast. All mm. I did, I spread. I used them butter and garlic. Mm -hmm. Then I did, I did the toast on the pan. Yeah, with then a little vegetable the, oil. Yeah. Then for the avocado, mashed avocado, I added some mayonnaise, mm -hmm. some lemon, black pepper, and a pinch of salt. Yes. And then the meat, the ram meat. Yeah, ram mutton meat. Or mutton. Mutton. Yeah. So I um, sauteed it. I already spiced the meat with salt, with seasoning, thyme, and curry. Okay. So I sauteed it with a bit of oil and I added some pepper mm. in it. It's pretty spicy, people. Very spicy. But, um, but when like it comes said, in here, yes, it's going to... Yes. Once we marry it with our avocado spread, all of that, you know, spice is going to, you know... Um, it's going to turn it down a yeah. little bit, yeah. So let's quickly see how you're putting this together. And then, of course, we have our sunny side up here, yeah. looking pretty good. So I'm going to mix this okay. with the avocado. Okay. All right. So this is more like making a sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. And plates very nicely, mm. which I'll show you as well. So if you've been watching from the beginning of the show, what we are trying to do basically here is um, show you what to do with your ram, your leftover, leftover ram meats, mm -hmm. for, or ram meats leftovers from, you know, the Ilea, which just concluded. And um, so what we're doing here basically is, you know, we, we, we um, chopped them finely spiced them yeah yeah in um, some seasoning and really hot pepper and now we are marrying it with avocado mayonnaise and lemon right yeah yeah look at that nice really really nice is that good yeah very good fantastic thank you okay so right now spread on the bread mm. So remember, we have avocado spread, we have our spicy ram meats or muttons, and we have our garlic toast, people. Look at that. Oh, this is quite a rich breakfast and very nutritious as well. Very mm -hmm. nutritious. I mean, the avocado already plays avocado the role is... of, yeah, so many nutritional benefits that you can get from your avocado peel. Are you going to put on the sunny, sunny side, side up? up, yeah. And then cover it? Yes. Oh, nice. Nice. Our guest is going to have a fabulous time <laughs> breakfast today. Wow. Yeah. Okay, Amy. <laughs> anyway, we have to go on a quick break, people. There's so much more. Guess who's with us? Stay with us and find out. We'll be right back. You are about to become the governor. This is, this is what you do. You want to throw it away, right? Is that what you want? Look, this state is a one party state. Dejo, you are the chosen one. Imo Omoren is a Nigerian <laughs> filmmaker whose flair for production has been brought to bear on such projects as Project Fame, MTV's Advance Warning, and so much more yeah now his first feature film uh lemon green was critically acclaimed and some of his works have been nominated for various awards his movie hard times which is the first silent black and white film in nollywood earned him his first amvca in 2015. yeah and of course he's won uh, even awards yeah since then amazing <laughs> Join stuff. Us today we weren't sure if we were going to come today because we know that he's a big Thank you very much. Busy guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yes. Literally and figuratively. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like Good that. Good to have you join us. Uh, uh, thanks for having me. 
Hold on. There's so there's so much to ask. Yeah. So much. Uh, first of all, we we know about a, a period piece that you just finished working on. Yes. And there's just so much that has gone into that piece that yes. I would love for you to to tell us uh, what that piece was all about. So uh, the I mean, Herbert Macaulay. The Herbert Macaulay affair. So yeah. I made a period a period drama about Herbert Macaulay. Mm. I've been working on it for over a year mm. and just finally finished it. Um, so we cut the teaser and we put it out there, and the response has been overwhelming. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's a, it's a story about the early life of Herbert Macaulay when he, he, got, he got back from England okay. and started working in in the, in the system, the colonial system here. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then for the first time, he meets uh, discrimination, and mm -hmm. that that sows the seed to his uh, revolutionary uh, ideology. Mm. Yes, okay. amazing, amazing. I, I think you know it's. Um, People get really scared yeah. when you talk about making period pieces yeah. because, again, whether I'm a director or a producer, I'm thinking of the cost. I'm yeah. thinking of yes. how do I, the look and feel at the end yes. of the day, yes. is it, it going to be believable? Yes. But why do you keep going back to do it? Um, for me, you know, I'm a thoroughbred filmmaker. I do, I do this for the love. I've also wanted to be a filmmaker. I've also wanted to tell these stories. And there's so many stories just lying around and people are not telling them. And I just felt like this is the story I had to tell. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was very expensive to shoot. Um, honestly, I'm broke right now. <laughs> I can imagine. I was going to ask about the cost as well. Yeah. But it's fine. You know what? It's worth it. The, the response just from the teaser has been overwhelming. Mm -hmm. The film itself is a very good film, and, mm -hmm. and I'm proud of it. And by the time the film is out, everybody's, everybody's going to see it, and I know that this is a good film. Mm -hmm. And so for me, but primarily what drove me was the fact that we need to preserve our, our, our stories, our history, mm -hmm. our historical figures. But because I tell you, in the next 30, 40 years, yeah. people will know who Harry Macaulay was. Hmm. Yeah. The people that thought Harry Macaulay was a white guy. Yeah, a lot of people did. A lot of people, that. like yeah. a lot of grown people, thought yeah. Harry Macaulay was a white guy. And I was shocked. I'm like, you didn't know he was black? <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I was driven by the fact that we need to preserve our, 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 our historical figures, our history, basically. Mm. Wow. The, honestly, the only thing I remember about Herman McCauley was a moustache. <laughs> that was the only thing because I didn't have much more information yeah. about yes. him. And that's yes. where I wanted to go yeah. when it comes to the educational aspect yes. of, uh, you know, the young people learning a little yeah. bit more. So did you have that in mind or was it just about telling the story? I mean, obviously, it's expository, the, mm. the, the, story, the, the film itself. When you watch it, you learn about his life, his mm. personal life, his family, his mm. relationship with his, with his first wife, mm. and he, you know how he started out. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, I had that in mind, but I, I wasn't trying, I'm not also trying to make a documentary. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, it's also an entertaining film. Okay. But you know, he was a rock star, normally. Mm. Wow. Without even embellishing anything, he had a rock star life. Wow. He was out there fighting these people. He had a network of informers. Wow. He was really subverting the colonial government. He was mm -hmm. out there trying to get things done. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't a guy that just let things happen to him. Mm -hmm. You know, he happened to things as well. So he, mm -hmm. he, he influenced his own timeline. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so let's talk about the uh, essentially more. I mean, mm -hmm. you uh, sh sort of... Um, um, took the industry by storm. I don't know whether to use those words. But yeah. <laughs> from the angle of, okay, uh, who's that guy? And mm. then suddenly you're doing big things and yeah. everybody's, yeah. you know, um, you're sort of taking over the space yeah. with something that is, that is different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your background. How did this influence what you are doing now? Because a lot of people, you could have taken the, the easy way out. Yeah. Uh, look for a bunch of really famous actors and just uh, yes, do yes. Uh, Put them in front of the camera. And, <laughs> and things like that, <laughs> stuff that, and just do a hundred million naira yeah. box office yeah. movie like yeah. everybody else is doing. Yeah. Yeah. But you're doing some, you're doing things differently. Yeah. Is it your background that is influenced by this? Your training? What is it? Um, I I don't know. <laughs> it's, you're you're right. My background may have influenced a lot of what I'm doing. Um, like I said, I don't I don't necessarily do. I don't think of profit first. Okay. Obviously, I make a profit from all the things I, I do, but that's not my, my initial driving force. Mm -hmm. I always like telling the story. I like enjoying my process. And for me, I always choose actors over, over uh, movie stars. Okay. So I'd, I'd rather choose a good actor over a movie star. Um, you know, I, I have a 15-year plan for my, for my film career. Okay. You know, that's the first phase. Obviously, I'm going to live longer, so I'm going to have another 15-year plan. Mm. But I um, mean, towards the... the I'm in the, in the eleventh year of my of that plan, mm. okay. and so I had I had what I was gonna do with the, but but I'm scaling up now, mm. so 
who knows next couple of months you'll see a lot of uh, big movie stars in my film <laughs> <laughs> but i started out with making very intimate stories human angle stories mm -hmm. and just kind of build up from there mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. i always say to myself no matter how big i will become i will still preserve you know a part of my soul that mm -hmm. i started out with yeah. okay so there are quite a lot of writers directors producers uh, from Hollywood, yes. you know, that would probably, you know, have jumped on stories like this. Yes. But do you look to any particular directors? Uh, well, there's a director called Wes Anderson that I really oh, yeah. like. Yeah, okay. I really, really like him. Mm. His styling, mm. the way he mm. sets up his things, mm -hmm. his cinematography. I okay. really, really love that. Mm. That's about the the only guy that I look up to. Really? But but I essentially draw my inspiration from from Nigerians. Okay. Just just being around us, we are very vivacious. We're very you know upbeat. Like just sitting down, observing Nigerians, mm. just go about their business. It's just a story there. Mm. <laughs> mm. Sometimes I just go out and just have a drink. I just watch people just talk and just move around. And you know, there's just a lot of things that you can just learn from just watching them. Mm. So. Amazing. I, I feel like, you know, um, you are helping a new generation of filmmakers. Yeah. Not just to think of because right now you just said you, you're not thinking the money first, even though you, you want to make profit from it. But because this is the kind of inspiration that young scared in quotes yeah. filmmakers would say to themselves yeah. okay you know what i can do this you know i can pick a story of um, queen amina yes. or, or or think of uh uh of opobo yes. and, and cr actually do the story okay. and not be scared that it, it wouldn't sell or that i wouldn't be able to do it completely i mean the, the lots of uh, the lots of new filmmakers that admit that 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 they're influenced by me, that mm -hmm. put that the ones that don't admit it, but it's fine. But I can see, <laughs> I can see from their work that literally just jack yeah. my blueprint, but that's yeah. fine. I, lo I love it when mm -hmm. I say it. But I, a lot of people come to me and say, oh, yesterday was my birthday, oh. and half of the messages were from, you know, people that were saying, yo, I, I, they were inspired by the things that I do. Mm. Happy um, birthday. Thank you. <laughs> so, so for me, I, I understand that I play, I play an important part in, in that movement. Mm. Um, yeah, all right. And that's what everybody should do. It Just is actually a movement. <laughs> but speaking of movement, we need to make a move and uh, move towards the kitchen right now. Yes, the chef yes, has indeed. been yes, throwing uh, together. When is uh, the uh, Herbert Macaulay movie? Uh, what's it called? The, Her the Herbert Macaulay Affair. Okay, the Herbert Macaulay Affair. Oh, yes. When is it out? Yeah, first yes. of October. October 1st. Oh, yeah. A very, very interesting date to have chosen. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Very significant. Well, so welcome uh, to the kitchen. So since it's your birth, we're still in that Emo. birthday. <laughs> birthday spirit. All right. Yeah. We okay. thought we should uh, bring one of our special chefs. It's to not do a something. cake, but uh, it's a. This is what you call a delicacy. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to the kitchen, Imor. Yes, thank um, This you. is Chef Debbie. Hi, Hi Chef Debbie. Yes, and morning. this morning she's made avocado spread with ram meat. Did you have any ram meat over the? Uh, no, no. Yes, no so way. we are giving you ram meat. This morning. <laughs> Spicy yeah. ram meat on garlic toast. All right. Mm. Yes. I like it. So while you're having a taste, Chef Debbie will quickly run through, you know, how she put this together. Okay. Okay. So for the. Okay. Um, okay. I'll start with yeah. you. The avocado sure. and the. Um, Ram meat. Mm. Mm -hmm. All we did was um, me and um, <laughs> Emma. She actually assisted me who uh, was in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So what we did we spiced up the meat with curry, thyme, salt, seasoning, mm -hmm. and then stir fry. And we added some peppers. Mm. Then for the avocado, we mixed in some mayonnaise. You know, you have to like try different things with Why ingredients you, you already know. Now? Instead yeah. of eating bread the same way, you can make mm -hmm. a garlic toast. Mm. I mean, why eat bread and butter yes. all over? And you also time? get uh, a glass of a glass wow. juice. All 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 juice. juice. <laughs> it's coming every day, man. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think? So? Chef, so this, this is this is brilliant. This okay. is brilliant. Thank you. All right. You know, if this was uh, one of those cooking shows, you would have won the prize. Yeah. Oh, uh, this, this is scoop. You know. What <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what. As I'm a, as actually a, going for a competition. I tell you what. As a as a film director, I can mm. see the aesthetics of this food. Mm. This looks good. All right. If this was a, in a, in a film set. It would be, it would make nice cinematography. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, All right. 
All right, Chef Debbie has done justice to today's meal, and we've yes, done justice has. to today's show. Yeah. <laughs> we have to round off now. Yes, a big thank you to our friends over at Homely NG for the kitchen accessories. Yes, indeed. And, of course, a big shout-out to everyone who was on the show today. It's been a wonderful Wednesday. We appreciate mm. you. And we'll be back 6 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah, Thanks, Omar, for joining <laughs> thank us. Thank you so much. Thanks for having and, me. And uh, Chef Debs, mm. well done. Thank you. Your view is next after this. Have a great day, y'all. Bye. Bye.